Hello, this is Andrew from Sprog DCC. Welcome to our YouTube channel. In this video, we look at using the JMRI software with the Sprog programmer. If you are new to Sprog and JMRI, you should review our installation video. At this point, the Sprog should be connected to the power supply, the computer, and the programming track. Here you can see the programming track and the loco I'm using during this video. We'll minimise the view so we can work on the JMRI window. Click on the new loco button to bring up the create new loco dialog. This has a list of many different types of decoders that you could choose from manually. But we don't need to do that with JMRI. You can see we're connected to a Sprog programmer and then you can click read type from decoder. During programming operations you may see a loco creeping along the programming track or hear the motor clicking, as you can in this example. With a complex decoder such as the sound decoder in our loco, it can take a little while to read all of the information necessary to fully identify the loco. Once activity is finished, we can click the Open Comprehensive Programmer button to start playing with the decoder settings. Here we see the roster entry for the loco but we'll come back to this in a little while. To start with, we're going to go to the Basic tab, where the very most basic information about the loco, including the address, is found. Click the Read Full Sheet button to read the information from the decoder. And you'll see that the various fields change colour as the information is read from the decoder. We can see that this decoder is set to a short address of 3. I want to change it to a long address, so I can click the long address radio button and then type in the new address that I want. You can see the fields change to yellow to show that they are out of date with what's in the decoder. We now click on write changes on sheet to send everything to the decoder. And that's our very first programming operation performed. take a look at a few more of the tabs that are available. So on the motor tab we can set the acceleration and deceleration rate. Again we can read the current setting from the decoder. Similarly for the basic speed control we can see the starting voltage and the maximum voltage that's currently set in the decoder. Next we'll look at the speed table settings and again the first thing to do is to read the full sheet so that we have the information from the decoder. You can see that the reading is quite fast when using the Sprog. The buttons below the speed table allow you to create different kinds of effects such as a linear speed increase or a logarithmic speed increase. We can change this by moving the sliders and then hitting one of the buttons Force straight, oops, that's not what I intended actually. Bring it down again and match the ends. We now have another linear speed table, but with a restricted maximum speed. If we change the last step up to maximum again, and then click the constant ratio curve, you can see we get a different type of speed table with fine control at low speeds and then greater speed steps as we increase speed. I'm going to revert to a straight speed table and then write the changes back to the decoder. Again, the writing is relatively quick. And there we are, the decoder is now up to date with the software. Now we'll go back to the roster entry that we looked at earlier. Here we can enter our own information about the loco. So in this case, it's a Union Pacific 997, which I'll use as the ID, and the 997 for the road number. You can enter any other information here you like in completely free form, and then save it. And this is now saved on the computer as a record of how that particular decoder is programmed. If you want to make some changes in the future, then it's very easy to come back and do that. And what we'll do, we'll close the programmer window for now, and then double click on their entry in the rostra. 
and you'll see that the programmer window is opened up again and we can go in and make any changes that we want to do. A unique feature of the SPROG in programmer mode is the ability to open the throttle and control the loco whilst still on the programming track. On the action menu, select new throttle, enter the loco address and click set. The function buttons may be populated. This is decoder dependent but can be reassigned later. Click the power icon until it changes to green and we hear the loco power up. I've turned the power off as the volume is a little too high. We'll now open the programmer again and adjust the volume by reading in the settings on the volume tab. I'll skip forward past the reading and we can now lower the master volume and write the changes back to the decoder. Switch back to the throttle, turn the power on and the volume is now low. We can use the function buttons to test the horn and operate the lights. You can also drive the loco with the throttle on the programming track, or in my case I have a running stand, although you can't actually see very much happening. That brings us to the end of this video. We've looked at setting up the SPROG in JMRI, some basic programming operations, and using the throttle on the programming track. Thank you for watching. Please do consider subscribing to our channel.